Okay, so this is part two of making ramen noodles in Blender in a stylized way. So if you haven't already seen part one where we do the modeling of the actual ramen bowl and the toppings and everything, go ahead and watch that. But this is part two where we'll just be doing the lighting and the materials, which are super simple. So great little beginner exercise. So uh, yeah, let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. So now that we're in part two, we're just gonna finish off by doing our materials, our lighting, and making things look nice. So you can see over here, if you haven't already done it, remember in the first part, under your render settings, you wanna make sure to set it to cycles. And um, you know, the max samples we set to 45. With that in mind, we're now gonna go into our front view. We'll just quickly go Shift A. We'll add in a camera. And the camera positioning is completely up to you, but I prefer to kind of move it. So it's kind of looking down a little bit like this, but not too much. Okay, and we're also gonna go to our camera properties and we'll just change our focal length to 120. That'll allow us to kind of see the floor as a background almost. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So if we move the camera back with a really high focal length like that, we can go Shift A, we can go to our mesh options, add in a plane, scale that plane up and click, scale it on the X a little bit, there we go. And then tab into edit mode and then just select this back edge. And now what you can do is you can grab your move tool and you can just kind of grab that, oops, the, let's just go G, Y. Actually, let's we'll just go G, Y of that edge selected. And just move it back till it fills in the camera here. And like I said, that has been made possible because we took our camera and we set the focal length all the way to 120. If it was like 55 or something lower, you can see that's the issue, right? So that really kind of helps frame it in this sort of way, which just works really well for what we're trying to do. Okay, now let's focus on lighting. Lighting, we're gonna keep it super simple. Start off by just going to your world, uh, your transform pivot here, change it to 3D cursor. Then go Shift A, go to your light options and add in an area light and go G, Z and move it up. Now this scene is quite large. You could scale everything down if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a strength of like 450, which I think should be okay. And a size of five meters. And now if you go into your camera view and you go Z and you go rendered, you can see this is what you have. Nice. So now what you can do is you can kind of go Shift D to duplicate and then rotate this light towards the back. So now you have another one kind of giving you a little bit of backlighting. Then you can go Shift D to duplicate R, Z and rotate and have one kind of coming off from the side. And then Shift D to duplicate, rotate and have another one kind of coming off from the front here like that. Now we have this nice lighting. We can quickly go over to our world properties. Let's just slightly drag this value up so our world is not as dark. And then let's grab our floor. Let's go over to our materials and go new. It's just called floor. Let's come here to our viewport display and that's not gonna do anything, but if you wanted to, just like we did in part one, you could add a viewport display to so see it, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I guess the main thing we wanna actually look at is the surface. We wanna come here to the base color and change it to something like a nice yellowish kind of color, I think would work. So if we go Z and go into rendered, let's just mess around with that. So it's sort of like this sort of framing. I might just go back to the world and just make that value even a little bit lighter. There we go. So that's gonna work really well now. We have a kind of like a scene here. Make sure to save as you go. And now we can grab the ball. We're in rendered view here. And let's go over to our materials tab. And in part one, we added the placeholder materials, which is really handy because now all we have to do is grab the ball material, go to our base color here under the surface, and let's change it to a nice sort of blue that we were going for. So I'm gonna go with something like this. I'm gonna drag down that roughness to make it look more reflective, but not too much, like that. And then if you added the second material in part one, which was optional, you could always go ahead and give that something. So I'm gonna go and do that. I'll bring down that roughness just a little bit. And then moving on to the noodle, let's select the noodles. We already added that material in part one. So under the surface, change it to kind of like a sandy sort of peach color and then bring down that roughness a slight bit. Very simple, then let's select the spring onions or the scallions if that's, when if that's what you refer to them as. Then come to the base color and let's kind of give that sort of like a greenish color, maybe make it a little bit darker in value, something like that. And then let's select our egg. With the egg white, I'm gonna go slightly off white, bring down that roughness slightly and then we'll select the egg yolk that we added in part one as well. And we'll give it sort of like a nice saturated orangey yellow and bring down that roughness. Then we're gonna select 
our Narutamaki, and we're going to go to the base color. We'll kind of give that a slightly off white as well. Maybe almost a little bit pink. Bring down that roughness slightly. And then select the pink swirl on it. And go to the base color. And let's make that nice and pink, which is kind of like the traditional color. And then the last thing to do is just select our broth, which is in here that we added in part one. And let's just come to the base color and kind of give it sort of like, I'm going to go for a darker kind of like almost oak kind of color. Now, I've seen ramen broths, all sorts of different colors, but um, I guess just try and kind of match it as close as you can. And then bring down that roughness almost all the way since it's a liquid. And there we have it. So that is very, very simple. Also our chopsticks, let's not forget, we did add material and under the base color, we'll kind of make them darker like this. Sort of like a brownish kind of color. And we'll leave the roughness just a little bit under halfway, which I think looks good. So now we have this. Feel free to grab your lights and kind of rotate them just to kind of get things fine tuned. Now you can mess around with this all you want. And um, there's all sorts of really cool kind of things you could do with lighting and the colors of the light and stuff. But we're just going to keep it very simple. Something like this. And um, yeah, we'll just go now and do our final sort of render. So yeah, let's now go, make sure to save. Let's go render and then render the image. And there we have our final render. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Those of you who are supporting the channel on Patreon, you'll be getting access to this blend file. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you watching. Give a like, subscribe. I have a lot of other content and I cover almost every topic in Blender you can imagine. So check out all of my hundreds of videos and I'm sure you'll find something that you like. I'll see you guys next time.